Good morning, AO. How are you guys doing this morning? This is Heather Brockman. I am one of your mentors. Oh, now I'm live. Okay, hey. Good morning, AO. How are you guys doing this morning? Uh, my name is Heather. I'm one of your mentors. And I have a ton of questions, so I'm just going to jump right into this. Okay, first question comes from Carrington. Question they asked, how can I make a loyalty program effective for my business? Business description and background. <clears throat> I own a photography agency focusing on creating unique and creative product imagery for clients to use digitally to increase online sales. I have been unsuccessful over the past year or so to figure out a subscription model that would help bring in more clients revenue on a retainer or additional monthly income basis. I was wondering if a loyalty program where people can earn points and get rewards to excite them and spark more recurring bookings. I would love to hear your ideas on whether a loyalty program like this would be good for my business or what other options you would look at in order for me to create retainer clients as opposed to one-off bookings. Thanks so much. Okay, so for this, I don't necessarily know if a loyalty program would be your best bet, um, but maybe something where they pay for a certain amount of your time or your services and that way you're guaranteed to get x amount of money in once they've fulfilled x amount of hours then you get more money in um, if you wanted to do something like that and incorporate some kind of reward like once you pay for let's say 30 hours then you get so many points and these points can be redeemed to you know extra pictures or something like that maybe try that approach instead of like a full-on loyalty program. Um, that's what I would do personally. Uh, I hope that helps. If you have any other questions, you know, you can DM me. Uh, next question comes from Robin. It says, question they asked, from a timeline perspective, what time frame should I be looking at to hit six figures in my business? Business description and background. I am an up and coming artist painting. I am working on building my portfolio, learning to sell, as well as even my own personal development. As well as me. I come from a very limited mindset and I'm growing every day thanks to AO. Yes, you are. How do I know if I am on the right path? Am I happy? And I know it is going slow, but how do I know if things are on the right path? How do you determine that for you? Okay, so there's a bunch of different questions in here. So to address the time frame, that is 100% based on your goals, the money you want to bring in, um, what your expenses are. So I can't really give you an answer for that one. That one, especially since I don't know your financials, um, it's really hard for me to answer that. So that's something I would ask you. What time frame do you want to hit six figures and then work backwards from there? Um, as far as, let's see here, how do I know if I'm on the right path? Do you feel like you're on the right path? That's what I would ask myself. Am I, I am happy and I know it is going slow, but how do I know if things are on the right path? So for me, sometimes happiness trumps money. Um, I know that might not be an answer that a lot of mentors will uh, agree with, but if you're happy and you're happy with the amount of money that's coming in, even you, though you know that more can come, if you're okay with where you're at right now and you're still working towards growth, in my mind, you're on the right path. I can't specifically answer that for you because that's an internal question, but that sounds like some soul searching is in, in order, Robin. But I hope those answers kind of point you in the right direction. Um, next question from Robin again. How would you respond to a prospect who says they do not have wall space for more art? As an artist working on location, this is often a response when a client sees and loves my art. With that, I started creating tiny drawings for tiny spaces. Thoughts? How would you overcome that objection? Um, so first off, I, I've seen your, your tiny art and I have it on my refrigerator actually. Um, so the brutally honest truth is if somebody has seen your art and they're still saying they don't have time for it, to me, that is them saying they don't want to display your art. If somebody showed me something 
And I was wowed and I was like, oh my gosh, I see the value in this. I see the vision. I, I see what you're trying to portray and everybody is going to love this and I want this on my wall. I would make room on my wall. So maybe people aren't seeing the, the vision that you're trying to portray because it's not just a sunset. Like, what are you selling? You're selling peace, times of peace and calm. I believe that's what your, your mission statement is. So maybe relay that to them a little more. Like, why you're painting this? Because for me, I would want to know the why. If I'm looking at a piece of abstract art and it means nothing to me, I might not put it there. But if I understand where the artist is coming from and I'm like, I can get on board with this, it's going on my wall. So maybe sell yourself a little bit more on that one because your art is amazing. So I hope that helps. Okay, our next question comes from Brad. He asks, how do you know when the time is right to leave your full-time job and go all in on your business? Business description and background. I am currently a full-time firefighter and paramedic for a local municipality and have 13 years of service invested with 12 more for retirement. The climate has changed drastically, and although I never dreamed I would even con consider leaving the fire service, I find myself struggling to find a reason to stay. My business has been growing slowly over the last several years, but it's still not at the point where I feel comfortable leaving the guaranteed income of my side job. However, I am totally burnt out and ready to leave. It's the fear that's holding me back and the lure of the guaranteed income and benefits that keep me there. So how do I know when it's the right time or when I should make the leap? Okay. So even though he's not quite a mentor yet, Joe is going to be a perfect person for you to talk to about making that jump. When it comes to the financial stability, what I would do is have six to 12 months worth of all of your bills saved up just in case. When you are burnt out and you're done, you're not, you're not your best. When you're, okay, how do I, how do I say this? I feel like my words are going to get jumbled here. Would you want one of your employees showing up burnt out, knowing that they're not going to perform at their best, knowing they don't want to be there, knowing they're just there for a paycheck? So now put that on the fire department. Like, do they want you showing up like that? So I understand that security of the, the, the money and the benefits, but that's a very limited mindset. So a lot of this is just mindset, like you said. So to get out of that fear, start prepping yourself, put things in place to bring people in, get your processes ready, start delegating more of this work. So you can see the income growth from your side job and I don't know, maybe take some time off from the fire department so you can still have that stability. Unfortunately, it is a fine line that you're going to have to walk until you can totally make that plunge. For me personally, I would have that money set aside for incidentals. That's what I would do. So in that time, work on your processes, hire somebody, get them out there to do the work so you are not completely burnt out working on your side business and the fire department. Um, but if you're that burnt out, maybe it's time for a vacation, get a reset get your head right. Ask yourself why you're even doing this. If you are done done and you want out, then that's your answer. Take the plunge, get out of the fire department, start your new job. But with that, you also need to leave the fear behind. So I hope that helps. Um, but again, talk to Joe because he quit his job um, and was kind of in the same position. And you see where he is at now. He is absolutely thriving and killing it. Shout out to Joe. So next question comes from Rosalie. She asks, what are the best, what are the best ways to discuss work performance concerns with team members in a way that will help them improve rather than feel frustrated? Business description and background. I have an accounting firm. When a team member gets stuck with the client's work, I jump on a call with them and resolve the issue almost immediately. I've seen them get frustrated and embarrassed with themselves. How can I better these conversations so we can leave feeling great and positive? So first off, I can understand why they're getting frustrated if you're jumping in to save them every time. 
If you're having to jump in and save a client, rescue a client, resolve a situation, it sounds to me like your people are not properly trained. For them to be properly trained, make sure all of your processes are in place, all of your trainings are in place. That way, next time a situation arises, let them figure it out. They're going to mess up, but that's the only way they're gonna learn. You can't keep jumping in and saving them and expect the company to grow. I, 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 and I understand because it's that little bit of like, I still wanna have all this control because it's still my baby and nobody can do it as well as I can. If your, if your employees are performing at 80% of what you would put out and your clients are happy, take it and run. No one is ever gonna do 100% of what you do because it is not their business, it is not their baby. Provide them with better training. Allow them the grace to mess up because they're going to. When they mess up and they can fix it themselves, it's gonna boost their confidence, boost their self-esteem so that the next issue that comes up, they're like, oh, I figured this out in the past. I can do this without having to go get Rosalie. Your clients will get used to people that aren't you. It's a slow transition. It can be a little bumpy, but provide your people with the proper training. And if you see that there's a trend, I'm constantly having to fix this issue or that issue, and it's a common theme, focus on that for the training. Ask them, where do you feel you need more training? And maybe reach out to your clients. What issues are you seeing that my team is not fulfilling to 100%? Where have I lacked that I can improve? Pass that on to my people to improve everything. That's what I would do. Okay, next question comes from, and I hope I'm saying this name, uh, Leanna Kulinski. Question they asked, how do I find money to pay for things as a new business owner when cash flow is super tight and we just don't have money for certain things like websites, marketing, etc.? Business description and background of question. I've been trying to set up the website myself, but it's been very difficult. I've checked YouTube, how-to videos, tutorials, etc., but it's far too confusing for me. I've looked into Fiverr, but I'm hesitant. I know I need a better e-commerce website and some other things for the business in order to grow sales, but I feel stuck knowing how to get it done and pay for it. What did you do to find money to pay for things in the beginning? Uh, for me in the beginning, I took out a small loan to kind of help jumpstart things. Um, if you have access to any 0% credit cards, maybe that. There are grants that are available, and there's also angel investors. I know that there's certain websites you can go to. Some of them will want a cut of the business. Some of them are just, here's the money and you pay me back, and there's certain terms involved. Um, I don't know much more past that. Um, but you might wanna check into some grants, look at those angel investors. If you're able to take out a business credit card, I know that um, with some of those credit cards, you can get a bunch of points and get cash back from them. You might wanna to talk to Todd about that. He's really, really good at that. He actually taught me some of that. Um, so that's the best that I can answer this question. Um, so I hope that helps. I'm just gonna divert that to another mentor. <laughs> Uh, next question comes from Kelly Killingsworth. Question they asked, how do you deal with feeling vulnerable and anxious about letting everyone know everything about your business and what you are all about? Business description and background of question. We strive for excellence as an excavation company specializing in trenching, site prep, road work, aggregate hauling, and heavy equipment operations. I'm feeling very vulnerable right now and super anxious. I'm going to all general contractors, the city halls, Cal Fire, residential builders, social media platforms, and generally letting it all hang out, trying to land a job subcontract. I didn't expect to feel like I am right now. Okay, so the first thing I wanna ask you is why are you anxious? And is it like a lack of sales? It is, is it a lack of work? Um, and then my second question to you is, why wouldn't you want everybody to know 
everything about your business and what you're about. If I'm hiring somebody, I'm gonna do some research on them. I wanna know what their vision is. I wanna know what they stand for. I wanna know if they have any accreditations. I hope I said that correctly. Um, I wanna know who exactly they are. So what are, what are you scared of that people are gonna see? In this instance, it's a separation of you are not your business. So if there's things that you're dealing with personally that you're afraid might come out, you're not your business. So you can deal with that in another aspect. Um, I'm all for therapy. I don't care if everything's going great in your life. It is always important to talk to somebody before things hit you know, a bad spot. So those are some questions that I would ask you because I really don't know how to answer this until you answer those questions because it's kind of put me at a dead end there. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to talk to you about this further. So if you want to send me a message, you're more than welcome to. Um, and we can maybe talk some things out. So I hope that helps. Uh, next question comes from Kristen Lander. A question they asked. What are some ways an entrepreneur who is in a stage that requires working 60 to 70 hours a week can also plan some downtime for thinking of fresh ideas? Uh, business description and background. The amount of time I'm working on growing my online business is not sustainable, but necessary for now. I also know that when I have some free time, I'm better able to come up with innovation, innovative solutions and growth ideas. I imagine this conundrum is not unique. Curious how others have handled it. So for me, when I discovered time blocking, it was a game changer. So what you can do is just carry around a pen and paper or put it in your cell phone, whatever, and then mark down what you're doing at what times. It may be very surprising to you to see how much time is wasted because even though we say like, I worked 13 hours today, did you? Was it like an hour here or an hour there? And then it was like 15 minutes on social media or, and then I was chit chatting with this person. When you time block and you're actually held accountable for what you're doing during the day, you might see that there's some free time there. Another thing you can do is mark it in your calendar. That's what I do. I have CEO visionary time marked in my calendar every day from 11 to one, whether I use it or not, that's another story but it's in there and I work around that. It's very important for you to be able to work on the business and not in the business. You have to schedule that time, just like you would schedule a meeting, just like you would schedule working with your financials, just like you would schedule anything else that's important for the growth of your company, that you time and that, that uh, growth time is just as important. So make sure you schedule it in, but I would also highly recommend the time blocking to see how much time gets wasted during the day. All right, and our last question comes from Ricardo. Question they asked, what are some practical ways to show team members appreciation? Business description and background. <clears throat> I own and operate a barbershop with three other barbers. I want to continually show gratitude and appreciation. How can I practice this habit without breaking the bank? Okay, so with this, I might send some words of caution when I first started growing and I had employees, I wanted to reward them for everything. Like pretty much, hey, you showed up for work. Great job, here's a bonus. That was a really bad trap for me to fall into because I started rewarding them for everything. Things that they were, things that were in their job requirements. So be careful when you start over rewarding because then it becomes expected and then productivity falls. I'm speaking from experience here. Um, but as far as showing them appreciation, ask them because everybody, it's the whole love language thing, but everybody receives appreciation in different ways. Some people might want to have a shout out on social media. Some people are more private. They just might want some cash um, or a little trophy or you know go to lunch with you. So I would ask them how they would receive it because for the longest time, I was making the mistake of, well, everybody wants to be shown appreciation in the way I would wanna be shown. So I was doing that for all of my team members. 
and then getting frustrated when it wasn't appreciated. <laughs> so the best thing you can do is open that line of communication and ask them, but make sure, I don't wanna tell you what to do. What I would do is make, make sure that you have performance standards. And then once those performance standards are being met or exceeded, then reward from there. So I would just caution you with over rewarding um, because it can be a slippery slope. But um, that is it for all of my questions today. Those were awesome questions, guys. Thank you so much. It was nice to answer those. Um, but if anybody has any more questions um, or my answers were not clear for whatever reason, you are more than welcome to send me a DM. I will talk to you off, um, off camera, that's fine. Um, but if not, then I hope you guys have an amazing day and go out and make some sales. I'll see you guys, hopefully, some of you at uh, Summer Social. Talk to you soon, bye.